coming back at you for the back nine of La Mirada. Hopefully you were able to see just exactly how awesome I did on the front nine. Here's a little recap for you. Boom. Yep, that happened. <sighs> it's all good. Amazing course. Having a great time. Will warn you though, this disc or the this course is not the most beginner friendly. I'm not a slouch if you've seen some of my other productions. Uh, this course whooped my ass so far. Let's see how we can do on the back nine. Hole number 10 at 241 feet. It seems short in a straight line, but there is a mando to the left of that tree forcing you away from the walk path. And, um, you're not in bounds until you cross the culvert. You've got an uphill slope. You've got to fade it out to the right to get to that basket. If you're looking for a birdie, it is going to take one heck of a finesse shot. I let one of my drivers go just a little too early there. Looking at a downhill putt for a par, or a downhill approach to save par. Definitely not running any kind of crazy putts like that. There's OB behind the basket all over the place, just like most of the layouts. Should be a easy tap in par there. Not the hardest hole on the course, but again, these are all tough birdies. There's no gimmies here. Darkness. Taking that par. Let's go right, right along the way here to number 11, 258. Again, look at that elevation change. Severe, substantial elevation change. Not a long distance in a straight line, but this is going to play like a 350. Came in with a hot sidearm and got, a, got the ground play that I wanted. If I would have pushed that out a little farther, I think I would have been there, but... You know, next time I play, all kinds of corrections are going to happen. I'm sure I'll get nine strokes better, but for review purposes, this course is just simply amazing. So I sent it way up there. must have caught this tree. Don't really have a look at the basket. It's right behind that tree in front of me, so... No hope of a two here. Da, 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 da. Tapping in for the par. Let's get up here to hole number 12. Now this one's a doozy. 371 feet, so that's not a very short distance. It's pretty far out there. And it is way down another substantial elevation change. So basically that big hill that we just went up, it's going to drop that far back down. So huge roll away dangers, culvert down past the basket, making out of bounds into the play. So you've got about, yeah, I want to say like probably 275 just to get to the slope. Past my disc there, so I came back to it, and then the basket is just right down the hill here. So for me, I'm just going to try to come up with a nice little flexed out putter approach, but it cuts a little, sits a little sooner yeah. than I wanted. This course just continues to eat us up. You can see that culvert down there, creating lots of danger if you roll away. And that would be an out of bounds. So here we will, looks like, yeah, that was our second shot already so here's our 
third, and that will be a bogey. Saw is going to tap me in, but I'll walk up to the basket here for you so you can get a good look. Now, hole 13, 285. I accidentally forgot to record my drive, but no worries. We're going to walk through here, uh, walk through it here for you. You tee off. You think, oh, yeah, the basket's way down there. I got all these trees. I'm just going to throw a big, huge spike hyzer like Eagle McMahon and park it. Nope. You have a double mando about, uh, I want to say, 120 feet away right here. These two red bands. And it's not perfectly even. It is staggered. You are going to be having all kinds of problems if you try to get way too aggro. Just clear that mando. The hill continues to slope downhill, putting this low ceiling into play. If you can make that double mando and not land too close to these trees, you could potentially go over. But if you really do make that mando the way you want, you're going to be somewhere in these trees or hopefully past them. Like down where Saw is, close to that out of bounds maybe. I was able to hit that mando and lay it up, so that should be a par. Kind of gives you a break out in the open here, but that, that first little spot is, is a very tough shot off that tee on 13. Not for the faint of heart if you don't have a, a laser beam. Lee's upset. He's taking a five there. Welcome to the five club. All right. Hole 14, 366, pretty wide open, no OBs, no Mandos, not too crazy of an elevation change, so I'm going tack mode with a roller. Did not quite stand up the way I needed it to, if it did, I, again, corrections for next time. You can see the basket down at that cluster of trees to the left of the fairway, pretty attackable for anybody. No dangers. Just need some power. 366 playing more like a 400, 420, just because of that uphill. So if you got some power, shouldn't be too hard of a park job. Again, looks like I had that distance. Just need to get it a little closer. Left side of the fairway. I know. We just have me and him are like the the. We are like the shit-talking duo of the whole fucking thing. We just oh yeah, we talking do. about Victor. What's that? Kind of a what do you mean? hop, right skip, here. bid there. No medal for me. Well, there's no one to talk shit to. You guys are cool. Yep. So I was like, why aren't we talking shit? Oh yeah, we're cool. Cashing those pars. <laughs> Off 215, 298. So we're just going back down the hill that we just came up. 298, again, not a long way in a straight line. In this one, you almost have to speed control because we're going downhill. And I let that one go a little fast. I was kind of worried about not making it. So I put a little mustard on it and I made it just a little too far. So again, power not being the biggest asset that you need to have here. You need to have speed control. That is the name of this game. That La Mirada. Control the speed. And don't miss bandos. And then you will not go out of bounds and you will not be bleeding all kinds of strokes like I am. So now it looks like I've got well outside circle one putt for a two. Quiet, please. Yeah. Don't know why I even got salty on that. I wasn't even close. And that is not in my comfort zone anyway. Oh! <laughs> Saw off the band. Alright, ooh, left myself a little tester there for for a par. Not a gimme. Alright, safe. 
Going up to 17. I'm sorry, 16. 370, and again, substantial elevation is going to make this play more like a 450. It's way up there. So, throwing up a flippy sidearm to just get up on that hill to try to get up to the pin level so I'm not throwing uphill for my approach. That culvert to the right and beyond is out of bounds. Defines the right side of the fairway. Pretty steep incline here. These hills are no joke, guys, I'm telling you. When I checked this out before I got here, I thought, oh yeah, no problem. Yeah, run this course over. Nope. It has humbled me. Sorry. Actually, no, I'm not. Yeah, I know. That's why I blame it on you. Not sorry at all. Saw so had a decent drive and then oh. rolled all the way downhill out of bounds. It was pretty, pretty bad. Oh, oh, that was almost metal right there. Running that. Wasn't really trying to, but I almost found some metal there. Let's go up here and yeah, tap in another par. I think at this point, Chad's nine strokes ahead of everybody. Ah, uh, take that, Lee. I was totally like, uh, what you do with your right hand, you do with your left. Hole number 17, 327. You've got the hill sloping from the left down to the right towards that culvert. That sidewalk and that culvert makes up the fairway, so you're teeing off from out of bounds. And I'm getting aggro with the sidearm. I am expecting it to go OB right there, yep. Right by the basket. The sign did not indicate any kind of drop zone, so that was kind of my plan was to just attack it and if I go out of bounds, bring it back in for a, a par run. So that is what's happening. Man, look at this park though. So clean, so pretty. Well manicured grass. There's my disc right there, OB. I'll bring it in right there where it went out. Let's see if I can save a three. DCA, DCA ah, I saved it. Hey, there was no drop zone, so that's legit as far as I'm concerned. That was a legit part. <laughs> Saw disagrees. Alright guys, 18. We're going back towards the tee pad for number one in those two red trees right up there. <laughs> oh, look at that. And I just totally flipped that up. I was going for out of bounds. Uh, not the drive that I wanted to have to end the round here, but it's kind of blind. You can't really see the basket. I mean, you put eyes on it, you can see the band there. But when you come back down the hill, and you look uphill and you go, oh, what am I going to throw? It's it's so easy to pick the wrong plastic here. And that's what I've been doing pretty much all round. Throwing discs that are too flippy, and I should have just been going more stable. This is this would have been, should have been easily parked if I would have thrown my, my boss or destroyer. So that should be a wrap, guys. This has been has to be one of the top courses I've played as far as maintenance, the baskets, the tee pads, everything is just great. The layouts are great, they are challenging. Nice. And don't forget, this is only the Front 18. I will be reviewing the back 18 at some point. It is similar, but it is a little bit more challenging, believe it or not. I did do better than I did here, though, because I had already warmed up for 18 holes, so... Me and my brother-in-law, Nikki, should be coming back up here in the next couple weeks. 
back nine and final score, eight over. You know, not really where I expected to be. But again, if you saw that front nine, full of critical mistakes. But no worries, corrections will be made. Had a great time with good dudes, and this was an awesome, awesome course. Highly recommend. Hope this review gave you some good calls to make ahead of time. Check out my new little bunny friend. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay tuned for more reviews and event coverage and awesome content.